What's up everybody? This is Aircrete Harry and this is part two of learning how to make Aircrete. So in the first part I went over foam, the air pressure settings you want to go for, the way the foam looks, if it's uh, not enough air in the system, and um, I also made uh, foam using the Dawn detergent uh, dish soap and I made foam using the Drexel and they're both in those two five gallon buckets there. The one on the left is Dawn, the one on the right is Drexel. So next we're going to make uh, our cement slurry. So we have um, the ratio of cement to water when you're making aircrete and say you're using a 94 pound bag of cement, Portland cement, you want to have six gallons of water to that one 94 pound bag of cement. So what I have here is I divided the 94 pound bag and the six gallons of water by 20. So here I have 4.7 pounds of cement and two and a half pounds of water. So this is the same ratio as the 94 pound bag of cement and six gallons of water. So, and this is important to know because you maybe don't want to make an entire bag of cement. Maybe you want to do some smaller batteries. So this would be the ratio for that. And obviously if you want to make more, you just double everything. So, and I also use a scale to weigh all this which if you click in the link below the description box has aircrete tools and I have the same scales that I use the two scales which I put away <laughs> so anyway we're gonna mix up our cement slurry now okay so when you're mixing your cement slurry you always want to start with adding your water first I tell you now if you add your cement first, you're looking at a hard time to get everything mixed up well. So ideally, you want to have your mixing paddle. I recommend using this Spyro if you're starting out. Um, it's on a, like a dual drill that I'm using. And so I'll uh, place that in there, get that spinning. and slowly start adding the cement now when you're mixing you want to be sure to control your drill and go around the sides of your bucket or your garbage bin whatever you're using because the cement tends to stick in corners and you should try and always make sure the bottom of whatever container you're using to mix your slurry in doesn't have ridges, that it's a flat bottom container. So this is it. Our cement's mixed up with our water and we now have a cement slurry. That's our cement slurry. Okay, so the next step is to mix our foam. So the recipe I'm going for here is a... Um, so this is as if we were doing a... Uh, mixing the 94 pound bag in a 50 gallon container. You'd be adding 42 gallons of foam to that mix. So again, if you break that down it comes down to two gallons of foam, 2.1 gallons of foam we're going to be adding to get that type of mix. And that's the standard mix uh, most people do. So I'm going to first make a batch using the Drexel because I have the Drexel already hooked up to the foaming wand. After I do Drexel I'm going to rinse out the uh, machine and make another batch of aircrete using the Dawn. Okay, so I'll um, 
make sure my line is primed. I'll turn my air on. Gonna scrape this top off. You see, the foam doesn't want to come out. That's good. Got to scrape it out. So a little bit over is going to be our point 0.1 for the 2.1 gallons of foam. Okay, so that's our foam. Now we're going to mix that in using our drill with the spiral bit. There's the drill. So, um, with this drill bit, with this paddle, if you spin towards the right, it'll be basically pushing the foam down. If you do counterclockwise, you're pulling the cement up. So in the beginning, I like to go counterclockwise to pull the cement up into the foam. And I'll just move the drill up and down as I go around the bucket and then back towards the middle and you want to try not to come all the way out because you don't want to grab air and pull it in and um, potentially add bigger air pockets to your mix just something to be aware of it's not going to damage everything tremendously a lot of times the air pockets the air bubbles will work themselves out now, another technique that I use uh, all the time is I'll tilt my container over so that everything can concentrate in a corner while I'm mixing it. I like to hold this edge of the mixer paddle bar along the edge and I'll just lean it against there and let it spin in the spot until I see the cement coming up. So you want to look at the color. You want to make sure it's all even color. Spin the bucket around. Now if you don't get a good mix, you won't get good air creep because your cement will be stuck to the bucket. So you want to make sure everything is good and mixed. And this is how the Eurocrete looks. You see the bubbles don't collapse like a ton. This is the Drexel. Okay. So, I have uh, some molds that I made out of foam. I laser cut these out. The uh, front side of this is nice and even. The back side got wider because the laser beam widens out because the material is so thick so um anyway I just made this uh mold up yesterday that says subscribe so I'm gonna fill this with aircrete and uh, we'll see how it comes out
Okay, I didn't have enough there to get it to the edge, but it's definitely enough. Um, here's the bucket. This is also very important. When you're mixing your solution and after you make your foam and you mix it into your slurry, you want to be sure you didn't have cement stuck anywhere. I had a very light coating with some dry cement still at the bottom, but that's something you want to be aware of. Sometimes you need to actually get in with um, a trowel. Sometimes you might need to get in with the trowel and scrape it out to make sure that it's well mixed with your foam because otherwise you won't have a uh, consistent air creep. It'll be weaker. Okay, everybody. Um, that was uh, lesson two on how to make air creep. As you saw, we um, first made our cement slurry using the proper ratio of cement to water. Then we added our foam, the correct amount of foam, depending on the uh, strength of the air creep we're looking for. You know, if we were doing a denser, stronger mix, maybe you were going to use. I'm sorry, maybe we were going to make air creep bricks that's going to be high traffic you want to have a lot less foam make it denser so anyway this was uh, part two come back for part three of how to make air creep